you think I'm not qualified for. But if he asks you to do it, guess what? You just got qualified. I've come to understand that revelation is permission. When God gives you a revelation, he gives you a permission to walk into it. You see, what he doesn't want you to walk into, he won't show you. That's why you look around at other folks sometimes and you see what they're doing and you're going, I don't understand that at all. It, it's okay. You're not supposed to. It, it's not the revelation God gave you to walk in, but he's given you something to walk in. What would you do if you knew it didn't matter whether you could do it or not? You just knew that God said do it and you trusted him to do it through you. For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. That word power, there's dunamis. Same where we get dynamite from. You're going to hear that a lot in this series. Every work, i got to move. Every work of power that Jesus ever did was done by the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit. Everything that he did. I'm not going to go there because we, we went over that last week. Everything Jesus did, he didn't do in his own manhood or his own godhood. He did by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to give you four principles to understand when it comes to power being released to us, in us, and through us. You ready? Number one is this. Here's what it's going to take. It takes an anointed vessel. It takes an anointed vessel. God uses people to release power up on the earth. Well, God didn't send an angel to save humanity. He sent a man. Genesis, we haven't looked at this in a minute. I didn't put it up here. Uh, I'll just read it. And from the very beginning, God's intention was for man to rule the earth. It belongs to God. But he gave it to man to rule on his behalf. So when he set up the physical world, he set up physical laws. This is kingdom teaching. When he set up, phys when he set up the world, when he created the earth, he set up physical laws. He will not violate his own laws. So instead of putting angels on the earth to oversee and govern the earth, he created a man and a woman in his image, like him, like unto himself. Well, I wonder what God looks like. Look at your neighbor. In some way. Some of y'all going, that's scary. <laughs> Deeper spiritual truth, and I have time to go. There's body, soul, and spirit, the tripartite man. But listen to what he says in. In verse one, in Genesis one twenty six, he said, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and everything that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. Ladies, you're not left out. God was the first feminist. Now, maybe not like the ones we have today, but in God's eyes, he created both male and female equal in his sight. In verse 28, it says he blessed them. Who? The man and the woman, both equally blessed. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. It took both of them to do that. I'm preaching good. And so, y'all like that, don't you? Y'all like that part, especially. Anyway, subdue it. <laughs> Subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on it. My point is this, is that God from the beginning set everything up to where he would use man upon the earth as his, in, as, as his instrument for his glory. Everything is set up for man to rule and to reign. Mankind is doing that. Lost mankind is still following this mandate. Every, exactly. We don't even re, they don't even realize that you know, we're discovering all these things about the earth and about space and about all these things. Well, God mandated that to happen. He said, I want you I, go figure it all out. Capture it. Take dominion of it. See what you can find. 
neurons and protons and black holes and, and white holes and universes and stars and go to the deepest parts of the sea and see what you can see and see how fast you can go on land and in sea and see what you can accomplish. That's all, that's all part of taking dominion of the earth. There's nothing wrong with man taking dominion of the earth to rule it on behalf of God. But it takes an anointed vessel. How many of you know the man and the woman were anointed to do this? Why were they anointed? Anointing for right now, because we're going to do a whole message on anointing. Anointing for right now simply means to be set apart, to be empowered, to be placed in a position. In the Old Testament, when they anointed the kings and the prophets and various people, it was for specific things. And they poured oil on them, they rubbed oil on them, and anointed them. That symbolized the presence of the Holy Spirit upon their life. And from that point on, they could go and do what God called them to do. Now, Jesus is the perfect example of an Old Testament, I mean of a New Testament vessel. We went over this last week. He was born of the Spirit, right? He was then uh, baptized in water and the Holy Spirit came upon him. So he was baptized in the Spirit. So... When he came as a baby, he was already indwelt by the Holy Spirit because he was born of the Spirit. But he wasn't empowered till 30 years later. We have not one miracle listed of what Jesus did before the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and with power. So, out of that, now this is where it gets good. This is where it gets good. You, you, you're going to like this. You and I are set up for successful, set up for success in power ministry. You, you are set up for success. Tell your neighbor, I'm set for success. I didn't say you're going to go out and be a billionaire. I didn't say you're going to go out and be a millionaire. But I can tell you on the authority of the word of God that you are set for success before God to do all types of ministry before the Lord. Why? Because you are born of the spirit. Which means you are now indwelt by the spirit and you can be baptized in or filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit where rivers of water flow out of you. And how many of you know that flowing water has power? <laughs> We're going to get in Ezekiel again in this series, and I can't wait to get there, but we, we've got to set the stage here. Flowing water has power. It moves things. Tell your neighbor, the Spirit moves things. And you're set up for success. First John 2.20 says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. You see, there's a, there's, there's a difference in the Old Testament anointing and the New Testament anointing. In the Old Testament, only a few were anointed. That's why you read of more individual people doing things or less individual people doing things than you do when you come to the New Testament. Because in the New Testament, everyone who has received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, is now anointed. I didn't say that. The Apostle John did. But you have an anointing from who? The Holy One. You have an anointing. What kind of anointing? The same anointing that Jesus had. The same, mm, the same Spirit that anointed Jesus has anointed you. So why aren't we doing what Jesus did? Uh-oh, now I'm going to go messing. You're anointed. You, you, you're, you're anointed, you're anointed, you're anointed, you're anointed. But I don't feel anointed. <laughs> First comes faith. Then comes action on the faith. Then third comes the, de the demonstration. Look at your neighbor, tell him you're anointed. The way some of you looked at the people that were telling you that you were anointed, I'm not sure you believed you were anointed or not. <laughs> Confess it with your mouth. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed of the Lord. You see, you've got to speak things. Con there, there's power that comes through confession. 
And, and you, have, you have to begin to believe that because if you don't believe that, all you're going to do is have empty hands on empty heads. But if you believe that you're anointed of the Holy One, that you are filled with rivers of living water, and you act upon that, then there's going to be an impartation every time you pray for somebody, lay hands on somebody, or speak into a situation. That's how we'll build in faith. That's how, it, it's going to take months to get maybe to where we want, we want to be, but we're going to keep building faith in here in this house because this is the key to successful ministry right here. It's not in a methodology. It's not in a program. It's not how cute we can be. It's not how great our worship can be or this or that. Worship comes from the heart. But what we're going to find is this, is the more we allow ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us, the greater the worship will become. As a matter of fact, when we get to that place where I believe the Lord wants us, we, we won't even need anybody to lead worship. No, nobody have to sing. Nobody have to string a guitar or play a drum or play a keyboard. I know Charlie understands exactly what I'm saying here. That there's, there's a thing called spontaneous worship. And, and, and there, there's, there's a place of, of worship that happens where once you start, you just don't want to stop. It doesn't matter whether the music stops or not. It doesn't matter whether you like the song or not. Whether you like the beat or not. Whether it was too fast or too slow. When, when the Holy Spirit is leading the thing. When we worship in spirit and in truth. And we allow that spirit to flow out of us. He's going to take us into the presence of God. I'm... Secondly, we've got to be led of the spirit. First, it's got to be an anointed vessel. You are an anointed vessel. Quit looking for the latest hot hand around you. I have the greatest respect for apostolic ministries all around the world. I, 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 I fly places to get impartations from them. But what I've come to understand after 30 years is I can get what God wants me to get right where I am. I don't have to fly somewhere to get it. A change of atmosphere or a message that stirs my faith may cause something to be released that I couldn't get released somewhere else. But, but I, I, I'm going, I, I got a vision. I've got a vision that people will start coming here instead of having to go there. You'll get that on the way home. See, that, that's what's always been in my heart. Why should you have to fly to Timbuktu to get something from the Lord when there ought to be a whale right here? And it's not a person, it's a body. There are some, you see, my goal, my goal in this is not so you look at me as the one with the hot hands. My goal in this is that this whole body become hot hands for the Lord. There's always going to be a lead voice. Just ignore the stupidity that says that we don't need leaders anymore. That's, it's not biblical, number one. So just throw, there's always going to be lead voices. There's always going to be lead people. But those lead people, no matter who they are, are supposed to be training and equipping and leading the body to do the work of the ministry. I mean, the best thing that I could think that could happen is the body got so filled with the Spirit of God, so in tune with what the Spirit of God was doing in that body and wanted that body to do that there wasn't any need for ministry time during the, during the service because people were looking for people to be ministered to as they came in the door. You didn't have to wait for the holy moment during the service to get a healing. Somebody saw you walk in hurt. Someone saw you come in limping. Someone saw you come in with something wrong and, and immediately before you could get halfway to the, to the meeting room, there were three or four people done circled you up, done captured you. <laughs> uh, Pastor, you're getting radical. You have no idea how radical I'm about to become. You have no idea. You see, seekers are coming to experience God now, not just hear about Him. 
because you can turn the TV on, you can turn the podcast on. You